This presentation will take you through the new practice assessment document and how to use the document on par. The practice assessment document has been developed to ensure that student nurses are prepared to successfully meet the future nurse standards of proficiency for registered nurses at the point of registration. The NMC standards specify the knowledge and skills that registered nurses must demonstrate when caring for people of all ages and across all care settings and comprise of seven platforms and two annexes. The role of the nurse in the 21st century is to provide care for people who have complex mental, physical, cognitive and behavioural care needs across a range of settings, including people's own homes, in the community or hospital or any other healthcare setting. There are three practice assessment documents in total which incorporate the range of future nurse standards of proficiency. Parts in this context is used to represent the range of outcomes to be achieved by students at different levels. These parts may differ from the parts of the education programme that will be defined locally by each university provider. There is also an ongoing achievement record that follows the student through each part that is also available on par. The ongoing achievement record or OAR summarises the learner's achievements in each placement and with the practice assessment document or the PAD provides a comprehensive record of professional development and performance in practice. The purpose of the OAR is to provide evidence from practice assessor to practice assessor regarding the learner's progress, highlighting any areas for development throughout the programme. So, the Pan London Practice Assessment document has been developed in collaboration with practice partners, mentors, academic staff, students and student service users. The Pan London PAD has been developed for student nurses in all fields of practice, adult, child, mental health and learning disability nursing. On the front page, as usual, you will see information regarding academic assessor, personal student, personal tutor, student name, student ID and cohort. The PAD was developed by the Pan London Practice Learning Group. This group has representatives from 14 universities across London and aims to develop, support and monitor and evaluate a standardised approach to practice learning and assessment of learners on pre-registration nursing programmes. The contents page can be seen here or can be navigated on the green tab on the right. The contents page allows you to navigate through the whole pad and from this page you can navigate to a particular page or area that you would need to go to. The next page sets out the roles and responsibilities of both students, practice supervisors, practice assessors and academic assessors. The following page again gives you some guidance in regards to um, criteria used in the document and components of assessment and feedback. This page again provides some guidance within the document on the timings and suggestions for assessment and progression. There are three practice assessment documents in total which incorporate the range of future nurse standards for proficiency. Parts in this case is used to represent the range of outcomes to be achieved by students at different levels or years. In addition to achieving the required level performance at, each, at the end of each part, the student is assessed against a specified set of criteria related to knowledge, skills, attitudes and values for each component of assessment within the PAD. These criteria are used to assess the student on different placements across the year as they work towards the overall performance level to be achieved by the end of the part. Any registered professional who uses the PAD must complete the appropriate signatories. This includes the record of orientation, record of communication and or record of practice hours. This is required by the university to cross-reference and prevent falsification of records. Please ensure that you insert your name, signature and date as required throughout the document. And students. Details including the practice assessor details can be easily located here.
An appropriate member of staff familiar with the area, as identified by the nominated person or local manager, can complete the student orientation and assign the appropriate section of the pad. There are some elements of orientation that must be completed on the first day of placement, such as emergency fire procedures, the resuscitation policy and how to summon help in the event of an emergency. Students will sign and the practice assessor or supervisor will sign as well. The initial interview should take place within the first week of placement and this is completed by the student with support from the practice supervisor or practice assessor who will identify the learning opportunities available during the placement and will reflect on their achievements. If the practice supervisor completes the initial interview with the student, this needs to be confirmed by the practice assessor. The professional values are based around the NMC code of conduct. The practice supervisor or practice assessor can assess the midpoint professional values. If the practice supervisor assesses the midpoint, this will be reviewed and agreed by the practice assessor. The final professional values on each placement should be assessed by the practice assessor who will discuss and review with the student if there are any concerns. If there are any concerns raised, these should be discussed with the academic assessor. If the student's performance gives cause for concern at the midpoint interview, or at any point during the experience, feedback must be given and an action plan written to enable the student to address this prior to the final interview. The practice assessor must communicate with and involve the academic assessor in this process. This part requires the student to reflect on meeting the professional values. The student can choose one example from practice and demonstrate how they practice within the NMC code. Confidentiality in relation to people receiving care and service providers should be maintained. For each placement, a different area of the code should be selected to reflect upon. The point interview should take place halfway through the placement. This interview provides a formal record of student learning, reflections and achievement. Students are encouraged to take responsibility for their own learning and recall reflections. This page again is for the midpoint review where students can identify any learning needs and development needs and how they will be achieved for the rest of the placement. Final interview should take place towards the end of the, of the placement. Once this is completed by the student and the practice assessor, they will both review the progress and confirm achievement. At the bottom of the document, the student, practice assessor, and academic assessor will all sign this page to confirm achievement. This page allows the practice assessor to identify any specific areas that a student would need to take forward to the next placement area. It also provides a checklist for the practice assessor to ensure that all parts of the pad have been completed and again should be signed by the student, practice assessor and academic assessor. Within each placement there is a page for the student to receive feedback directly from someone they have cared for and all their carers. Practice supervisors or practice assessors are asked to support students by facilitating this and asking people or their families to complete the form and they should sign this on completion. It may not be possible to have this completed in every placement. The practice supervisor or practice assessor should obtain consent from patients or service users or carers who should feel able to decline to participate. The student will reflect on the feedback provided by the patient, the surface user or the carer and discuss the outcomes, including any changes to practice that need to be made, which can be included in the interviews or in an action plan. Students will have opportunities across all parts to work with other professions across a range of teams and agencies and will be able to gain an understanding of the different roles and responsibilities and importance of teamwork in providing person-centred care. Students should reflect on their learning when working with members of the multidisciplinary team and document this.
the practice supervisor will discuss the student's reflection and comment on their experience. The practice assessor will review the documented records where the student has worked with other health and social care professionals and incorporate into the assessment where appropriate. This page is for additional feedback that has not previously been documented in the PAD. These records can be completed by practice supervisors, practice assessors, academic assessors, or any other member of the team involved in the supervision and assessment of the student. Complete the end of one placement. There are three other elements that need to be completed on the PAD. These are the assessment of proficiencies, the episodes of care, and medicine. The assessment of proficiencies are undertaken across the part. These can be assessed in a range of placements. If a proficiency is assessed as achieved early in the part, it is expected that the student maintains that level of competence and could be reassessed in subsequent placement during the part. There are 29 proficiencies in total. Please spend some time looking at each of the proficiencies and how students could demonstrate these in your area. Practice supervisors and other registered health or social care professionals can contribute to the assessment of proficiencies within their scope of practice. Practice assessors will also assess proficiencies and have responsibility for confirming that proficiencies have been met at the final interview. Practice supervisors or practice assessors can simply allocate achieved or not achieved on their respective placement. Please ensure that you click save before you leave this page. The proficiencies are also recorded in the OAR for an over overall view of assessment. Episodes of care are holistic assessments which enable the student to demonstrate progression across a number of platforms and must be achieved by the end of the part. Effective communication and relationship management skills underpin all aspects of care. An integral component of this assessment is the student's reflection on the delivery of person-centred care. The assessment must be completed by a practice assessor. The student and the practice assessor should identify the appropriate placement and episode of care to complete this assessment. As there is only one opportunity for assessment, the planning should take this into consideration to maximise the learning for the student. More information on the episodes of care can be found in other teaching and learning resources available. The students are also required to undertake a medicines management assessment during each part. This assessment must be completed by a practice assessor. Again, more information on medicine management can be found in the relevant resources available. There are action plans available within each part. An action plan should be completed if there is consult cause for concern in relation to the student's performance. For example, failure to achieve components of assessment, such as professional values. If a student requires an action plan, the practice assessor should liaise with the academic assessor and is responsible for reviewing progress and ensuring support and learning is available. Depending upon the university and the practice placements policy, the practice assessor may have to inform the nominated person on placement. If you found this presentation useful, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact a member of your education team.